we, uh, we're having this conversation, I, I think, at a pivotal moment in Canadian activism. It's been the biggest year uh, in a generation, starting with the Olympics and moving through the G20. There have been a lot of fierce debates in, in the activist world. There have been some interesting new alliances. There's been a lot of energy. There's been uh, surprising persistence and radicalism on the streets of our country. And from different perspectives, uh, that's some of what we want to explore um, here today. So given that we're going to start with the big picture, let's take a little snapshot of where you think we're at in the, in, in the world of, of, uh, of organizing, Naomi. It's been a, it's been a big year. Where, where, where do you think we sit? 2010's been, um, been in, I think, a, a really incredible year for Canadian activism. Um, the, you know, we were, Avi and I are from Toronto, we watched uh, the, the mobilizations here in Vancouver against the Olympics on stolen land um, with a great deal of pride, pride uh, for our comrades who were in the streets um, and screwed up that photo op, well done. Um, I, I was talking earlier with, with Harsha Walia from No One Is Illegal um, about ways that we could understand what 2010 organizing means. And, and one of the things that I think happened this year is that Canadian activists screw their spine back. Um, there was an amazing amount of radicalism. And what, I'm, what, what was most exciting about the G20 mobilization to me was not that there were thousands of people in the streets in those, the official demonstrations, but that even after the brutal police crackdown and a huge roundup, uh, arrests of hundreds and hundreds of people, the biggest arrests since Clockwood Sound, um, people went back into the streets and refused to be intimidated. To me, I... I I, the reason why I say we grew our spine back is, is because I don't think we've seen this level of militancy on this scale since 2001 when there were huge demonstrations in Quebec City against the free trade area of the Americas and that was part of a wave of demonstrations, the so-called anti-globalization movement which was actually an anti-capitalist movement. And after the September 11th attacks, a lot of people got scared, a lot of people got spooked, didn't want to be part of demonstrations where there would be direct action. And there has been a process of, of, of careful rebuilding and also learning the lessons of the failures of those mass mobilizations, the fact that they weren't sufficiently rooted in local struggles. Um, and all of that hard work, I think, really paid off this year in some of these big, mobilizations like against the Olympics and against the G20. I, the other big breakthrough this year to, to, I, I think has to be said is the fact that the world found out about the tar sands. Um, this is, and this is an indigenous led campaign. Canada was rightfully shamed around the world in Copenhagen and ever since. What that G20 meeting was about was about passing on the bill for the economic crisis created by the richest people in our societies, the, 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 the elites of the elites who, who gambled too hard and got too greedy, and they're already pretty damn greedy, and they got bailed out to the tune of trillions of dollars, and now there are these huge public deficits, and they want regular people to pay the cost of their bailout. The billion dollar budget, um, that, uh, that the police gave themselves uh, to secure the G8 and the G20 uh, uh, summits was actually just an excuse to buy themselves a whole bunch of new weapons that they will use to enforce this new wave of austerity measures that the G20 prescribed. I mean, in their final communique, they decided to, that, uh, that all G20 governments should cut their deficits in half by 2013, which is an absolutely brutal cut. And people will fight back, and they will find themselves face to face with these weapons, these newly, new, these newly purchased weapons. Well, I asked for a big picture, and we got, we got a pretty big picture. Um, Art, how was your 2010 on the streets of this province? 
First of all, uh, I'd like to thank uh, all the people who uh, showed up here in Vancouver uh, when we had the, the march against the 2010 Winter Olympics. I think it was a, a great demonstration, yeah. great solidarity between Indigenous people and uh, non-Indigenous people to march together and to shout the slogan, No Olympics on Stolen uh, Indigenous Land. I think it was uh, a very significant uh, march in that sense. But when I mentioned this a bit to Naomi, she and we were talking about what we should do next. Uh, when we were talking, she sort of said that we, we need to get beyond the, the slogan of no Olympics on stolen land or no Olympics on stolen native land. Because we have some real serious problems in, in, in British Columbia. We have the fish lake, uh, proposed fish lake mine up near Williams Lake by the Tesico Mines. You know, that's a very serious problem that uh, the people up there are very concerned that this mining company wants to take a lake, a huge, huge lake, larger than this park, and they want to drain it and put it into another lake and call it Prosperity Lake. And then they want to mine under the original place where they took the water from. So talk about crazy, you know? And uh, the Chalcotin people are probably going to wind up having to, like in KI in, in Ontario, probably may have to go to jail uh, and, but in, in order to protect their territory up there. And they do need people to be able to stand behind them because this is Chilicotin, Chilicotin territory. And, uh, and uh, you know, if you support the concept of honesty and integrity, the, the, and then you oppose the government policy of not recognizing, you know, Aboriginal title, something that the courts have recognized, something that your Canadian Constitution 1982 said it protected. You know, if you want to stand up behind that integrity, and like we did during the 2010 Winter Olympics, you know, the Tosico mines and the Fish Lake issue is a very serious issue that, uh, that, that we need to address. The other one is the, the Enbridge uh, pipeline from the Tar Sands to Prince Rupert. I know the indigenous people up there oppose the, the building of that pipeline because of the possibility of damage to the environment. And they're going to need support uh, across uh, this country in terms of uh, stopping that because the tar sands is, is, is dirty oil. It's something that should be stopped, you know, because of the damage and destruction it's causing for all of us here. You've sketched a couple of, of important battles that are coming up in this province. Um, and and it's if people are looking for a what next, I think that's, lo you know, regionally, locally, that's... Um, that's a tremendous uh, direction. But a lot of the activist energy in, in the past year, uh, and it started in the Olympics and it carried on in the G20, has gone into debates within movements about diversity of, of tactics. And, uh, and I think it would be, it's sort of the elephant in the room to me. What do, what do you yeah. make of this debate that's been going on since the, uh, since the Black Bloc uh, actions? I was actually impressed around the, the, the um, G8, G20 mobilization that despite the fact that there was a lot, of, there was some tension on this issue, that after the police um, just went on their rampage, people really pulled together um, and put the sort of vilifying aside for the for the most part, with with some few exceptions, accepted that there were differences, um, but there were much that we had much more in common, um, and and organized. Um, Demonstrations. The one that where I, I spoke outside the cop shop in Toronto, um, that was a, a demonstration, w which was to calling for the release of all the prisoners, not you know just the ones who we you know appre approve of. It was for everybody, and 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 I agreed to those principles absolutely, um, and so did all of the other speakers. Um, yeah, and 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 um, I think there is. As activists, we always have to be strategic. The onus is on us always as activists to be as strategic as we possibly can. And I don't think that there is one tactic that fits in every situation. I don't believe anyone here believes that, that there's only one way to demonstrate and you have to do it at every single demonstration. We think about the tactics that fit the particular circumstances. That's the way you're a smart activist. And 
it's, I think it's, it's, it's just as stupid to think you have to break a window at every demonstration as it is to think that you have to say, hey, hey, ho, ho, what, whatever's got to go at every single demonstration. I mean, this doesn't, you know... It, it How about never again for that one? to a profound lack of imagination. Um, but the situation in, in, in Toronto what, what was interesting because in the lead-up to the summit, you were, we were having a really important national conversation about the outrageous spending um, uh, on security, the fact that the police had just given themselves this billion dollar present. And the, 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 the Canadian public was against the police. I mean, there was a poll that was done uh, ahead of, of the summit that found that 75% of Canadians believed that the, that the price tag for security was much too high. They had failed in their efforts to vilify the activist community uh, at, at, to justify this huge expense. Um, so, w what I was talking about was the fact that the police were playing public relations during the, during the demonstration, and we know because people were listening to the to the police scanners that the police had orders to stand down during that demonstration. This is absolutely a fact um, th th that they that they were that, that they sort of demobilized and kind of let it go wild. And at, while they were doing this, they were sending statements to media. Avi, maybe you can talk about this a little bit, what, what you got. Well, Al Jazeera asked for, for, for comment. Avi right, works at Al Jazeera English. Right in the middle of, of uh, the, 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 week, the G20 weekend for why, why the police didn't seem to, seem to be so absent when they'd spent so much money bringing in people from all over the country while they seemed to be missing in action on the, on the streets at some critical periods. And the police statement was extraordinary. They said, look at the cop cars burning on the streets. This is why we needed this extraordinary budget. So, so they, they, right in the middle of the events, the police were using uh, the property damage very, very politically in a, in a very inappropriate way for, for what, is, uh, what prides itself on being a, po a professional police force to play politics with the moment and point at uh, the flames to justify the money. The activist community in Toronto, a lot of people in Vancouver were involved, did an incredible job of keeping the discussion on the police actions. And after that initial hysteria wore off, the discussion we're having is about the civil liberties violations in Toronto, the way people were abused and traumatized in jail. Um, and there's going to be court cases, there's going to be inquiries. So we haven't lost this. Um, and I think, I think the jury's out. You know, on, on, on how this whole thing played out. I think people have a right to be very, very angry. You know, when we see that anger in the streets of Athens, we know people in Greece are pissed off that they're having to pay the price of this crisis. And I think that we need to send messages in different ways that Canadians are very pissed off about this. I, I want to. Are, are there are there parallel debates going on in? Um... In, in, in this moment, I mean, I saw you in the, in the streets uh, of, of Toronto, I wasn't here for the Olympics, but are, are there parallel debates going on in, in the indigenous uh, movements around tactics? 